Hey, bigger pockets. This is Brandon, and I am going to help, uh, hopefully, anyway, try to shed some insight for Christian Lincoln here on an uh, analyze my deal sort of post. So uh, he had asked, I'm looking for some analysis of my first deal. Thank you. A two structure property, student housing, nine total rooms, rooms 600 a month each, a uh, total of 5,400 a month, taxes 12,000, insurance 2,400, and turnkey condition 290,000. The owner will finance for two years at 8% until he can refinance. $100,000 down payment. I'll do management myself for now, a mile from my home. What are your thoughts? And then he did add, uh, let's see, owner paid heat and electric and snowplow, 6,000 a year. So those are the numbers we have to work with. Now I will preface this with, I am not a student housing kind of guy, but I'm gonna run them through the uh, rental property calculator uh, anyway, and uh, just kind of see what we come up with. So. If you want to walk through this with me, I've not done this yet on this deal. I don't know. We'll see what comes up. So uh, report title, I'm going to call it for Christopher Lincoln. Let me copy his name here. Property address. I don't need to worry about that because we're just doing a quick number. Uh, annual property taxes, though. Uh, but if we go back, taxes were 12000 a year. I'm not going to worry about MLS number, photo, or sales description because that's not important right now. Purchase price was, I believe, uh, 290000 So 290000 After repair value, uh, I'm going to leave that at 290 because we don't really know. Purchase closing costs, we're looking at, I don't know, it's hard to say on closing costs because it is seller financed right now. Uh, probably aren't going to be a whole lot. You probably want, maybe I'm going to guess $5,000 for that. Estimated repair costs. Practically none. It said turnkey, but I never like to say nothing, so I'm going to put in 2000 just in case. Uh, if nothing else, it'll be holding costs or something, but it shouldn't affect the numbers even if it was zero, so it shouldn't affect it too much. Uh, down payment on 290000 uh, I could go percentage here, but since we know he wanted to put down 100000 I'm just going to write a loan amount of 190000 That's going to be our, oops, not cash purchase. Let's try that again. 190000 and a loan interest rate of 8%. And let's see, interest only. I don't remember, did it say? 8%, it doesn't say if it's interest only or not. So, you know, I'm just gonna say no and say that it's regular. That could change slightly, but I'm gonna say uh, that it's not interest only. So just 8%. Uh, points charged by the lender, probably no points, probably no other charges. Uh, there are no points and fees. I don't have to worry about wrapping them. Amortized, we'll say 30 years. Again, that might be different, but I'm just kind of making an assumption here. A uh, typical cap rate, I don't need to include that here, but just for the heck of it, let's put 10 in there. Uh, total gross monthly rent. All right, so 5,400 a month in gross rent. Other monthly income, there's probably not much. I mean, maybe you could pull out some laundry income or something like that, but we're gonna leave it at that for now. Uh, let's go some more, what do we got? We know 6,000 a year for heat, electric, and snow plow. So 6,000 a year works out to 500 a month. I'm just gonna bunch all that into electricity. I don't see anything in his numbers. Uh, I don't see anything for water, sewer, or garbage. Uh, let me just look here. I do see 2,400 a year for insurance. But I'm just gonna guess that Yeah, I'm gonna guess that does, doesn't include garbage. So I'm gonna add on, I'm not sure, let me think. I have a, hmm, six people. They're probably using, I don't know, let's just go with college kids, $100. Oops, not in sewer. We're gonna add 100 in garbage. Now I'm gonna leave water out for now because I don't know if that was included or not. Uh, if so, you know what, actually I lied. Let's be conservative. Let's add at least, uh, 150 a month for water. Uh, if we find out at the end we want to take that out, we can. Monthly insurance also, we saw that it was 2,400 a year for insurance, so we're just gonna write 200 a month for insurance. Other monthly expenses, I'm gonna go back, just check and make sure we got it all. We got snow plow, we got heat, got electric. Uh, taxes, insurance, room, we got. All right, I think that's everything for that. Now we need to go vacancy right now. This is where I, I will fully admit that my expertise, if I even have any expertise, uh, loses. I have no idea what a vacancy rate would be on a student housing. I would imagine nine months out of the year it'd be very easy to rent, but maybe, maybe not. I don't know. So let's go and put in 10%. I don't know. 
Uh, repairs and maintenance, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and estimate five. I always do that no matter what. Uh, even if I think it's turnkey, I still always estimate at least 5%. Uh, CapEx, these are the big items that add up over time, so I'm gonna guess 5% for that. That might be a new roof, parking lot, whatever, uh, down the road. And property management fees, he's gonna do it himself, so I won't include it now. Usually when I'm doing a number though for myself, when I'm doing analysis, I always uh, m calculate management. Uh, even though I'm gonna be managing, I do it because I'm not always going to be managing. I am gonna get to a point where I'm gonna hire that out, and I'm actually almost there right now. And uh, so if I'm gonna hire it out eventually, I wanna include it from the beginning. But for now, just because uh, I wanna stick with the numbers he's got here, I'm not gonna include it. Uh, I won't put any income increase uh, because I don't wanna make any speculations here. And let us calculate the results and see what shows up. I'm very curious to see what happens here. All right. So according to this, uh, we got purchase price of 290, monthly income 54, monthly expenses came to 4424, which means looking at a monthly cash flow after all those uh, expenses of 975 a month, uh, that works out to a cash on cash ROI of 10.94. Doesn't seem too terrible. Uh, doesn't seem amazing, but it's not terrible. It's probably better than the stock market, at least. I mean, cash on cash, we're not talking about prices going up in value or anything like that. So just flat out 10, uh, 975 a month in cash flow. Now, granted, again, that was taking into account having to manage yourself. I'm going to go back actually now. I mean, we can look at the rest of this report here. I can see income uh, 54, 50, according to the 50% rule, this is kind of interesting. 50% rule says we'll have 1300 in cash flow. This is one of those examples that the 50% rule is actually not conservative enough for what we actually showed it with. So um, we can see income expense ratio, it almost meets the 2% rule, it's 1.82%. Uh, initial equity with 100,000, because that's the down payment. Um, based on a cap rate of 10, that puts the ARV around 284. So 290 is pretty close to what maybe the, at a 10 cap would be worth. At a nine cap is different, eight cap different than that, of course, but uh, that's kind of a good number to see. A debt coverage ratio, 1.7. That is nice, I guess. Gross rent multiplier. I mean, all in all, it looks pretty good. Um, but let me go back and edit the report to get a little more conservative on a few things. So next step here, uh, I'm going to go to loan amount. We're okay there. I'm going to go interest only, no. Uh, 30 year. Let's go to garbage and water. Um, 150 a month might probably just be fine. Electricity was five and that was that. Monthly insurance, we're okay there. Uh, let's, um, what was I going to add? Just to make sure. I don't know, maybe I wasn't gonna add anything, but, oh yeah, property management fees. That's what I was doing. Thanks, you know, be a little distracted here. So property management on a property like this, I would guess, again, this is not my forte. I don't know for sure, but I know most property management companies are charging 10%. Student housing has to be more difficult than that. Uh, plus people moving in and out more often. I'm gonna go actually 13% on this one for property management. Maybe that's not true, but maybe it is. And then I'm gonna go uh, income increases, property value increases and expense. Let's go just 2% per year. A little bit less than what inflation is, but we should be at least 2% on average. I'm just curious about these numbers show up I'm doing it this way. All right, so once again, now a factoring in property management, we can see that the cash on cash ROI here, 3.07. So if you take into account having to pay yourself for doing the job of management or hiring somebody else to do it, 3.07. That is not very good. I mean, that's flat out bad. So no, that definitely affects things. And personally, if this were me, because of that, because of that alone, unless I'm being too conservative on some other number here, that would make me not want to buy this because I'm basically buying a job for myself. Is that bad? I don't know. I'd rather stick my $100,000, you know, earning 8% in a, on average in the stock market probably than get 3% and, uh, but to each his own. You never know. Maybe prices are going up in that area. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe it's a hot area. Maybe there's a good, I don't know, opportunity for other companies coming in maybe can, can be converted back to a single family house. I mean, there's a lot of other factors that could affect things, but uh, just real quick, that was my, that's my kind of thought. So it definitely doesn't look as good. Uh, we can look down here on the graph though and kind of see what it would look like over time. So I can see that the proper property value is going up at that 2% per year. The loan payoff is going down and my equity is the green line. So I can see that at first I only have 108,000 in equity, but over time at year 15, I'm gonna have 264,000 in equity. That's not too bad. 
Again, looking here, year uh, 10, year 20. I mean, it takes up to year 20 to be able to get a cash on cash return of over 10%. Uh, so that, again, I don't know. I, that's my quick analysis and dirty analysis of the deal. Obviously, there might be more to look into. And uh, again, I think it just comes down to that property management. And do I have all my numbers right? Uh, the ones I was guessing on. Uh, is that what water really comes down to? Uh, let me go back to that. Here we go. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else in here I wasn't considering. So anyway, Christian, I hope that helps you out. And other people who are looking at this, I hope that helps you out. Uh, once again, that was the Bigger Pockets rental property calculator that I was using. You can check that out at biggerpockets.com slash calc. And uh, yeah, you do have to be a pro member to use it, but I think you can use it three times without being a pro member. So if you're not a pro, go check it out, try it out, uh, run your own numbers through it. You can do it for flipping or for buy and hold properties. And there's a wholesaling one coming. So anyway, hope that helps and thank you very much for paying attention. Bye.